welcome to the next tutorial. Um, today I'm going to be teaching you how to play the title track of the record, Escape Babylon, from the album Escape Babylon by Slave to Servant. And this one is probably going to be the most lengthy video and explanation. However, I would say that it, it is probably one of the easier songs to play once you get it down. It's not terribly complex as far as, I don't know, the difficulty, for me at least, is, is not as great as some of the other songs. And it consists of a lot of the things that are in the other songs. A lot of octaves and a few dissonant um, octave bends and picking parts. It's really about it. Um, and I think that the choruses to the song personally are the most challenging for me. Um, just because they're kind of quick to get to and and with the picking and whatnot they're just but once you get them down they're they're fairly easy so anyway let's just go ahead and start from the very beginning the very get-go of the song we're going to call this the main guitar riff and that's the way that the song starts and the main guitar riff also is used on the verses but it's slightly modified it's a little bit shorter of a riff um, when I'm singing. So it bleeds into the two verses and is almost identical to what, what we're going to call the main guitar riff. So the chords that I'm using are these minor sevenths, I think. They're just bar chords, but all it is is it starts off like this. You are not going to be playing these chords. You're going to be playing octaves over this, but I just wanted to show you for the record what is going on. So it has those two um, half steps there. I just keep playing the same positioning with these minor chords. Just like that. So it goes. And then I start singing. The difference really quickly, I just want to note this so that I can teach you the uh, octave parts. We go through that main guitar riff twice and then we bust, I bust into singing right away. And so where I would come in here singing on the verse over that same guitar riff, it's slightly changed because it doesn't end uh, with on that chord there. It ends on this chord. So it ends one earlier, three times on each. Like you alternate between these chords and there's a total of six chord changes. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. And the six, on the sixth one, it's a double hit. You're gonna do the same thing. Um, I do the same thing on the verses that I, I'm, when I'm singing, but I don't go back here. The double hit just goes here early on the fifth change. So it goes like that. So like this is a curtain call. Boom. Just like that. This is a curtain call. So the verses are one chord short on that part. And then it just goes straight up to the same exact other part. Or could it be a call to So that is it. However, this is going to affect what you play on the octaves. Your finger positioning is always the same on these parts. Um, they're just octaves, and you'll be staying on the, the A string with the pointer finger, and then your ring finger will be on the G string. And so we'll start off on the fourth fret and then go to the second fret with the pointer. And then the ring will follow accordingly. So it goes just like that on the guitar riff without vocals because you're doing six changes, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Boom. Then obviously when I start singing, it just goes This is a curtain call. 
just like that. I'm hoping that I'm making sense to you. So it goes, once again, we're going to start off with the... With your pointer finger on the 4th fret of the A string. And then your ring finger will be on the 6th fret of the G string. So you got an octave right there. And then you move between that, that fret and then this fret. Where your pointer finger is on the 2nd fret of the A string. And your ring finger is on the 4th fret of the G string. So, boom. That's really what you're playing on this little part here, though. Boom. Just like that. You always come back to these here. They're, they're, you're going to be playing these the most often, these two octaves here. But you're going to be alternating two other patterns um, after you play each of these. So it'll go... That's the first one. The second one that you'll alternate between is this one. It goes. That's really all you play on the main guitar riff. You're going to play the same thing on the verses, but like I explained before at the beginning, you're going to be one short, always ending on this one instead of ending on that one with the double hit here. So. Just like that. And back to the part again. And so that's, that's what you're playing. I hope that is a good demonstration of both the main guitar riff, which is slightly modified and different, a little bit longer, right? You end on that and not on this before getting into those alternating octave lines. And I'm about to teach you what frets you're on with what fingers, etc. here. So hopefully that will make sense. Now I'm going to break down those alternating parts. So after you hit the... You go down to here. You go all the way up to the 12th fret. And what you're going to do is your point, pointer fingers on the 12th. Your ring finger's on the 14th fret of the G string. Again, pointer is on the 12th fret of the A string. Ring finger is on the 14th fret of the G string. You go... You go down to where your pointer finger is on the 9th fret of the A string. And your ring finger is on the 11th fret of the G string. You move from there down to... Um, down to where your pointer finger is on the seventh fret of the A string, and your ring finger is on the ninth fret of the G string. And down so that now your pointer finger is on the fifth fret of the A string, and then your ring finger is on the seventh fret of the G string. And then you kind of briefly come back for like, I think it's one hit. I'll have to play through it real quick, but you'll end up back where you started and where you'll start again so that your pointer finger moves down a half step so that your pointer is on the fourth fret of the A string again and your ring finger is on the sixth fret of the G string again. And I think you hit it one time there before kind of going back into the... I will really quickly demonstrate that part now that I've given you where your fingers go. So. And now we're going to do the second alternating line. So after you hit that part, you go all the, all the way up much higher to uh, where your where your pointer finger now will be on the 16th fret 
and, of the A string, and your ring finger will be on the 18th fret of the G string. And then you'll move from that position to where your pointer finger now will be um, on the 12th fret of the A string, and your ring finger will be on the 14th fret of the G string. And then you move back to the position that you were just at. So, so once again, you're going to go move back up to where your pointer is on the 16th fret again. And 18th fret is on the G string uh, ring finger. So you go back up to that position. And then you come down uh, to the 13th fret of the pointer finger, 13th fret of the A string, pointer finger, and ring finger will be on the 15th fret of the G string. So, now I should be able to slow that down for you here and show you how to play that part. So, So it's just like that. However, um, you'll eventually change to the verses where you'll be doing all this stuff. And now I'll, I'll play the verse because I've been playing the ending on that. That's more so the main guitar riff. And the main guitar riff happens from the very beginning of the song, the zero mark, all the way to 11 seconds in the song. That's the first portion of, of hitting it where you're ending on on that note that extra hit the sixth position if you will then you'll do it again just like that will happen again at a minute and six seconds to a minute and 17 seconds in the song and then it will also end the song there will be a third and final portion that will end the song that way where you're playing these octaves it just does it one time. It, it, the song ends exactly how it started. From four minutes to four minutes and three seconds, which is, well, the end of the song there, um, I palm mute it. So you'll kind of palm mute it and you'll go. And that's how it will end, just like that. So those are the times that you're playing with the octaves, doing the six, right? the six switches instead of the five where I'm singing. I'm sorry to continue to reiterate this part, but it is very important and it can get a little bit confusing, especially for me being the guy who's singing. Um, I, I tend to want to play the seven or the, I tend to want to play the six all the time and it doesn't work out melodically um, the way I wrote it without switching to the five for the verses. So I will be doing that riff again on the bridge and I'll explain the bridge um, later, but you're gonna be playing something completely different over the bridge than you do on the main guitar riffs and the uh, verse riffs. So I don't really have to describe it, but it will come back eventually on the bridge to the song where it's this like breakdown where I'm palm muting and chugging and it's just like. We'll get to that later. So before we move on to the pre-chorus of the song, I just want to demonstrate one more time how the verses go and tell you exactly where the time stamps are in the song. Again, the verses, there's only two verses, and you play those with five chord changes instead of six, like those main guitar riffs. And this is the last time I'll mention that. So it goes like that. So you're going to be like this. how the verses go. That's the exact length of 
a verse. So there are two of them real quick. The timestamps for these for the first verse is from 12 seconds in the song till 35 seconds in the song. Then the second verse starts at a minute and 18 seconds in the song and goes till a minute and 41 seconds in the song. got this kind of figured out here now. Um, there is one more part I'm going to play, uh, which is going to be the pre-chorus to the song. You're still going to be using the A and G string with octaves on this. So I'm trying to get all these octaves out of the way. This is the last part that I'll teach you. It's the pre-chorus, and it's only one time through a very odd kind of chord progression, which is the same positioning, um, kind of like the other parts of the song, but I use this weird chord. So that, that's the chord progression. It's those four same positioning coming up the neck. So I palm it like this. And it ends with those two hits. And that's really important because your octaves are basically going to do, uh, well, something identical at the end. You're going to be hitting the octave on that. So the octaves that you're going to be playing on that part, and we're going to call this the pre-chorus lead octave riff, a.k.a. we'll call it Stay Woke, because that's all I sing over and I go, Stay woke, stay woke. Stay woke, stay woke, stay woke. Like that. That's how it goes. Um, of course, there's all these crazy harmonies over it. Um, I know I go a little overkill on my layering. But uh, yeah, that's that's how my part goes. Um, you don't have to worry about playing that. You're going to be playing on those A and G strings, uh, octaves, and your part. So as, as soon as I come in with that hit, uh, when I start playing that, that progression and I'm palm muting, you come in on... You start off on the 12th fret with the uh, pointer here, and it just goes like this. Very simple. Just four octaves that you play, and you end with me on those identical two last hits. So I'll demonstrate a little slower real quick, and then we'll, we'll break down uh, where your fingers are at real quick. So, um, your pointer finger will be on the 12th fret, as I said before, on the A string, and your ring finger, and your ring finger will be on the 14th fret of the G string. So, then you will move uh, down the neck so that your pointer finger now is on the 9th fret of the A string, and your 11th, and your ring finger is on the 11th fret of the. G string. <clears throat> then you'll move up. Then you'll move all the way up the neck so that your pointer finger is on the 16th fret of the A string. And then your ring finger is on the 18th fret of the G string. And then the fourth and final octave, you'll move up to where your pointer finger will be placed on the 13th fret of the A string, and then your ring finger will be on the 15th fret of the G string. So, yes. So, once again... Pre-course of the song that I just showed you, the timestamps 
are twice for the pre-choruses, quite short. Uh, the first pre-chorus happens from 36 seconds in the song to 41 seconds in the song. And then the second pre-chorus happens from a minute and 42 seconds in the song to a minute and 47 seconds in the song. Very simple. And that would conclude our main guitar riff, our verses, and our pre-chorus. And we will be moving on now to the actual chorus progression. Stay woke, stay woke, stay woke, stay awake and scam the world, escape the fate of Babylon, pop the gate and creep the lock, escape the chains of Babylon, stay awake and scam the world, escape the fate of Babylon, pop the gate and creep the lock, escape the chains of Babylon. Okay, now we are going to get into learning the chorus to Escape Babylon. Um, they're just these triads that you play on the high strings, which we've done before in some of the songs. Um, not not too complex, just gotta, it's just muscle memory, you'll, you'll figure it out. But um, before we break into what you're playing, again I want to show you what I'm playing chord-wise on this part. And so it's really just a four chord progression coming out of the pre-choruses um, that we just learned. So here we go. It goes right here. It goes. That's it. That's what I'm playing. You are going to be playing triads over me. And most of the time, uh, after the choruses, they I think they all really end in me coming back to that whole part there. So um, you'll come back in with octaves, on, with the exception of the time that you come in with the bridge, which we'll cover in our next segment of this video tutorial. So. Uh, getting into what you are playing on each chord, you will be playing a different triad. So you'll be playing a total of four different triads, and these are picking parts. I will begin demonstrating what you will be playing over my parts. All right, so I'm going to start really slow here on the chorus. Each, each of the four chords that I play will, will uh, be accompanied by um, four different triads, right? So... You'll be starting with this triad right here. It's very easy. It's a barred one, but we'll go we'll go slowly through this, and then I'll explain what strings you're on, uh, frets, etc. So you'll go like this. This is the pattern that you'll play at the beginning of the song. You'll pick it like this. So that's the first two times through the progression. You kind of give it that where you're you stop kind of for us for a, a little bit of a, a rest, and then what you'll do is you'll do the, you'll continuously go through it. You'll pick one more note, I believe. Um, so after that part, there are two more times through the progression. I think each chorus, um, well, the the first two choruses of the song are four times through the progression, and then there's a double chorus at the end. So what you'll be playing on after you play this part through twice the way I just played it, then you'll go into and that's what you do, basically. So you can hear there's a difference. Um, we're going to say that the first part of it that you played, um, the one where you didn't play quite as many notes, it was more of a long, more of a shorter picking. Um, you do that twice, 
those are the shorter triads and then there's the longer triads i will go ahead and tell you what you're playing specifically on what frets and fingers here and then we'll go through what um the duration of the shorter versus the longer and where they happen in the song okay so we're starting off uh the way that i play this is i use my middle finger on the first positioning here just barring my middle finger is on the seventh fret of the g string the seventh fret of the b string and the seventh fret of the high e string So that's your first one. Then you're going to move down so that your middle finger is on the sixth fret of the G string. And then your pointer finger is barring the fifth fret of the B string and the fifth fret of the high E string. So, so that's the second positioning. Then you're going to move up the neck a little bit so that your middle finger lands on the ninth fret of the G string. And your pointer finger will be on the eighth fret of the B string. And your ring finger then will be on the tenth fret of the high E string. So that is the third positioning. And then you will land on the final and fourth, fourth and final position so that your pointer finger is now barring the seventh fret of the G string and the seventh fret of the B string together, accompanied by your ring finger on the ninth fret of the high E string. And that is, that is the fourth and final position of the four triads that you will be playing over my four chords of the chorus progression. Now, uh, I'm going to break this down of what uh, the timings of what you're going to be playing. You're going to be playing the shorter triad picking where it goes like that. Um, you're going to be playing those on the first chorus, you're going to be playing those at 42 seconds in the song to 53 seconds in the song. And on the second verse, you're going to play those shorter triad picking riffs at a minute and 48 seconds to two minutes in the song. The longer versions that are more like this. Those parts you'll play on the first chorus at 54 seconds till a minute and six seconds. And then you'll play that longer picking triad. You'll pick that the same way on the second verse from two minutes in the song till two minutes and 12 seconds in the song. That is where those happen. I want to explain one more thing about the chorus and those parts. Uh, there is a double length chorus at the end of the song. Um, this entire duration of the final chorus happens from 312 in the song till four minutes in the song before finally hitting the that last final riff. So point being is that you're going to follow exactly what I just played on those, those normal choruses that are shorter in length. You're going to follow that same principle or guideline uh, that, that I just taught you where you're going from shorter, you're doing two shorter, two longer, two shorter, two longer, 
on the on that double length chorus, you'll start at three twelve in the song, and you'll play from till three twenty three with the shorter picking. triad part then you will play a longer one at 324 in the song till 335 in the song you'll move back to a shorter one again from 336 in the song till 348 in the song and then you'll do one more longer segment from 349 in the song to four minutes in the song with that picking pattern. That is what is played over that final chorus before coming to the final main riff that ends the song. However, I have one more thing to say before we close this chapter of the video. There is an overdub, which I'm sure if you've listened to the song already, you've noticed. And you may not have noticed that it's playing over that part, that, that triad part. Decided to do some studio magic when recording this song. Um, this happened on a, a bunch of songs where we just did overdubs and we layered things. And this was kind of maybe a little obnoxious, but I just felt like I wanted a, San, like a Carlos Santana style solo on the ending over the last, you know, doubled chorus, um, along with all the crazy harmonies and everything that was going on, like, like there wasn't enough layers, right? There weren't enough layers. So of course I threw in that idea. And so what we did with Kenny there was we let him just freestyle it. He just went, went crazy with it. I don't think, I, I don't know. I think he, he maybe like laid down two versions and I don't think we spliced anything together on this one. I think we just took one of them. But it really doesn't matter. Like, if you feel like being an overachiever, I will play Kenny's solo at the end of this video for you. Um, if you want to see what he played in the studio, uh, both both takes, and then I'll play an isolated stem of what he's playing over the triads and everything layered together, um, so that you can kind of pick it out if you want to learn it. But it really doesn't matter to me. I'm fine with you just playing the normal triads that are written over the chorus, if you would like. So that all being said, Kenny's part uh, is just this long solo over that double length chorus. And we will get to the isolated, you know, stems and everything at the end of the video. And now we will move on to the bridge of the song. the excitement begin we are now on the bridge which is kind of the final part of the song that I need to teach strategically um, before ending the video I know it's been a, a, quite a long one here but uh, this part on my behalf I will play my parts uh, before I play your part parts again and um, after that that second chorus I hit that then it breaks into palm muting and this chugging it's kind of like a hardcore breakdown and it goes back to it's basically how the song ends uh, with the same main riff with those two chords that go back and forth that are half step apart so it goes from that last chorus to And then um, I break into full on without palm muting with the drums coming in. Anyway, I don't remember 
remember the exact amount of t hits that I do, but I will tell you that um, you, what you're going to do on that first set of palm muting main riff parts that I do right there, the chugging, you come in a super simple part. You're just using harmonics barring two different frets here. So you just come in right away with me. This part goes from 2 minutes and 12 seconds to 2 minutes and 23 seconds in the song. And what you'll do is you'll hit this. You'll go and I kind of like bend the neck of the guitar to give it that so it wavers. And then you'll go and then again And that's, that's the easiest way I can demonstrate it. Um, I will play a stem of it as well. What you'll be playing specifically on harmonics is you'll basically just be using those... I... I I use the three high strings and I'm using the fifth fret. I just barring across the G, B and high E string. And then I do the same thing two frets higher on the seventh fret of the G string, B string and high E string. Of course, you got to do that neck bending thing while you let it ring out but that's that is basically it um i will say that you'll play you'll alternate you'll play each of those twice alternating so you'll do the first one that's on the fifth fret you'll play that one first at 212 in the song and then you'll play the second one on the seventh fret at 215 in the song and then you'll play the first one again that you did on the fifth fret at 218 in the song and then you'll come back one more time for a fourth hit um, on the seventh fret at 221 in the song so that's how you can practice the harmonic the bridge harmonics Part from 2 minutes and 12 seconds till 2 minutes and 23 seconds in the song over my chugging, palm muting, hardcore breakdown part here over the main riff. Now, what's going to happen, I think I'm still kind of chugging, palm muting on the next time through. And what you're going to, I think I'm still going... You're going to be just doing an octave bend. And this is actually the only, this is the last part that you're going to have to learn on the official bridge. There will be one more part to learn in the song after this, but uh, this is, I would call this the bridge and I would call the last part a transition, a chorus transition, like into the, to the final chorus. But we'll get to that after this. So what you're going to be playing is I'm going to call this the bridge octave bends. And we've been doing octave bends on a number of songs already, so this shouldn't be anything new to you if you've been learning the other songs. So what you're going to be playing uh, over the next little part that I'm playing is just you're just going to do an octave bend all the way high up on the neck, You'll do four octave bends, and you'll just go like this. And here's a stem of that playing real quick. So to break this down, your pinky finger 
will be all the way up on the 19th fret of the B string, and your pointer finger will be on the 15th fret of the high E string. It's real dissonant, right? It's that octave bend, it's that octave bend principle where you're going to start off dissonant and work your way up to unison, right? Doing an octave. So, And this is a slower part, so it's easier to pull off. So you'll hit it each time. You'll hit the octave bend of the four times. You'll start off. You'll hit it once at 224 in the song. Then you will hit it again at 227 in the song. Then you'll hit it again at 230 in the song. And then the final and fourth time that you'll hit it the same way will be at 2 minutes and 33 seconds in the song. Okay, so now we're going to stay here. And I think it's safe to say that I'm palm muting and chugging those two chords, right? It's like this build up until the song picks up and we start doing screams. It's where James is doing the higher scream, Escape Babylon! And I'm like, the writing's on the wall. And I start screaming that part. It starts off as like this whispery kind of softer part where you're playing on previous to where we're going now. And so you're just going to stay on the octave bends, but now you're going to be more rhythmic with what you're doing on this part. This is gonna go from two minutes and 36 seconds in the song till two minutes and 47 seconds in the song. That's only 11 seconds that you're gonna be playing this part. However, you do need to take your time with getting the rhythm down on this. It's not hard, it's just you're, it's just a little more involved than the last part, as the last part just rang out. So the same same position, you are going to be going like this. play a stem of that separately right now for you. Okay, so that about wraps up the bridge, and now we're going to get to the last part of the tutorial that I have to teach. So when you finally end the bridge on that then you're going to immediately switch and it's going to get there's this part in the recording uh, where i play an acoustic here uh, obviously i won't be playing an acoustic live i'll be playing clean electric here this the mellow bridge transition into the final chorus and you're using the chorus chord progression that we've used on the choruses but I pick it on the acoustic for a longer duration so it's like I believe that's um, the longest I played. It's just two times through the progression, but it's just a longer duration on each chord, like twice the length that it normally is. So while I'm doing that, you come in right away, and this is like probably, again, one of the easiest, probably one of the easiest parts on the whole record, um, but it's just really a nice nice transition. I like what, what's going on with it. I was heavily influenced by Saves the Days and Reverie. 
uh, when writing this record, but this song in particular was really inspired by a lot of Chris Conley's um, ideas and kind of what he manifested on that record. And when I was writing those secondary guitar parts, I had a lot of that in mind. You're going to be playing just these, just one string at a time. You're going to be playing the same four strings. You'll start off uh, while I'm on each progression. Each time I switch, you're doing one there, one there, one there, and then one there. And you kind of bend them a little bit, so it goes. That's basically it. And you do it one more time. last out of out of eight bends on on this on the the four different strings right that last one just goes faster you're, you're gonna you're gonna bend it faster like that so let's go ahead and break down the exact fret that you're on one finger at a time so you can put your pointer finger on the second fret of the high e string and bend it, just like I did. Then you're gonna move your pointer finger up, uh, same fret, second fret of the B string, and you'll bend it the same exact way. And then you'll use your middle finger on the third fret on the G string above, and you'll bend it the same way. And then you will use your ring finger on the fourth fret above on the D string and do the same thing. And as I said, you'll do that whole thing twice from 248 in the song till three minutes and 11 seconds in the song. But that final, that second time that you go through the progression, when you get to that final note, um, that last time, you, you you bend it double the speed like that and i'll play you a stem so that you can hear what it actually sounds like on the recording on this part So I think I'm done teaching you all of my parts here on this song, Escape Babylon. However, I did want to fulfill my end of the promise that I would play you what Kenny did in the studio uh, and then play you isolated stem of his actual part that made the record that plays over the final extended double length chorus from 3 minutes and 12 seconds till 4 minutes in the song. And we'll just go ahead and play those, and then we'll, we'll part ways here.
Okay, so I hope that helps, and I can't thank you enough. I'm truly grateful that you are taking the time to learn the songs off this record, and I look forward to potentially playing with you here in the future at a, a show. I will be back soon with another tutorial, and thank you very much for your time.